I have always been amused by a kind of a paradox. Suppose you go around and ask people, the United States, as you know, before 1914 had completely free immigration. Anybody could get on a boat and come to these shores, and if he landed on Ellis Island, he was an immigrant. Was that a good thing or a bad thing? You will find hardly a soul who will say it was a bad thing. Almost everybody will say it was a good thing. But then I suppose I say to the same people, but now what about today? Do you think we should have free immigration? Oh, no, they'll say we couldn't possibly have free immigration today. Why, that would, uh, that would uh, flood us with immigrants from India and God knows where. We'd be driven down to a, a bare subsistence level. What's the difference? How can people be so inconsistent? Why is it that free immigration was a good thing before 1914 and free immigration is a bad thing today? Well, there's a sense in which that answer is right. There's a sense in which free immigration, in the same sense as we had it before 1914, is not possible today. Why not? Because it is one thing to have free immigration to jobs. It is another thing to have free immigration to welfare. And you cannot have both. If you have a welfare state, if you have a state in which every, every resident is, is promised certain minimum level of income or a minimum level of subsistence, regardless of whether he works or not, produces it or not, well, then it really is an impossible thing. If you have free immigration in the way in which we had it before 1914, everybody benefited. The people who were here benefited. The people who came benefited. Because nobody would come unless he or his family thought he would do better here than he would elsewhere. And the new immigrants provided additional resources, provided additional possibilities for the people already here, so everybody could mutually benefit. But on the other hand, if you come under circumstances where each person is entitled to a pro rata share of the pot, to take the extreme example, or even to a low level of the pot, then the effect of that situation <coughs> is that free immigration would mean a uh, reduction of everybody to the same uniform level. Of course, I'm exaggerating. It wouldn't go quite that far, but it would go in that direction. And it is that perception that leads people to adopt what at first seem like inconsistent values. Look, for example, at the obvious, immediate, practical case of illegal Mexican immigration. Now, that Mexican immigration over the border is a good thing. It's a good thing for the illegal immigrants. It's a good thing for the United States. It's a good thing for the citizens of the country. But it's only good so long as it's illegal. That's an interesting paradox to think about. Make it legal, and it's no good. Why? Because as long as it's illegal, the people who come in do not qualify for welfare. They don't qualify for Social Security. They don't qualify for all the other myriads of benefits that we pour out from, what, from our left pocket into our right pocket. And so as long as they don't qualify, they migrate to jobs. They take jobs that uh, uh, most residents of this country are unwilling to take. They provide employers with workers of a kind they cannot get. They're hard workers. They're good workers. And they are clearly better off. If you ever want to know how people are, what people prefer, the surest sign is how they vote with their feet. And there is no doubt how the Braceros vote. They vote to cross the border with their feet, on their feet, or in any other way they can, by the, million, by the thousands and perhaps millions, for all I know. This illegal immigration is fascinating because it shows not only the main point I'm trying to bring out now, how interconnected are the various aspects of freedom? How interconnected is the problem of governmental arrangements for welfare and governmental arrangements for immigration and other things? But it shows a very different point that's kind of a digression. And that is how bad laws make socially advantageous acts illegal and therefore leads to an undermining of morality in general.
In relation to your statements as far as Mexican immigration go, I'd like to make the following comment, and that is that it seems to me that Mexican immigrants have a choice between, on one hand, staying in Mexico and getting what life they can, which to me seems like trying to evade starvation as long as possible, or crossing the river and then taking the job that they have available. And what I'm wondering is, is this choice a choice at all, and is it not equivalent to the gun against the head that you were talking about as absent from the Who's free... Who's holding the gun? The capitalists in Southern California who own the... On the contrary, it's a ma in your image, it would be the Mexicans who are holding the gun. Well, Because what denies them the opportunity in Mexico? There aren't enough capitalists in Mexico, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> not enough jobs available. Obviously, they have two bad choices. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that one isn't better than the other. Well, and yeah, you I must agree. distinguish sharply between the, uh, uh, somebody giving you a choice, uh, which is not a very satisfactory one, and somebody imposing something on you. Nobody is holding a gun to the head of these people and saying they should come to California. They are coming there because they believe they can have a better life for themselves and their children. They, they can't have a better one, yes. But is it a life, or as you said yourself, no American would, would like to do these jobs. No, it's so not that no American would like to. Many Americans would be perfectly willing to if that were their only alternative. But the Americans have better opportunities. Fine. Sure. How did the Americans get to have those opportunities? By being American citizens? Is that the point? No, no, by to? initially going through stages similar to that which the Mexicans are going through. So they didn't, they, you know, people don't come full-blown into the world. The nations don't come full-blown into the world with skills and capital and so on. That all has to be derived through a long historical process. I agree. And what's the alternative? If you say, well, we're willing to have the Mexicans in only if they can be supported at the level at which the Americans are supported, then you're condemning them to stay in Mexico. Mm -hmm. But isn't so it true? So don't, don't hurt them in order to help them. Isn't it true that the, that the, wine growers in Southern California would prefer to have these Mexicans working at this, at the rate they are working at, than they would to have Americans come in and demand higher wages because, the, because of the alternatives they have. They would they prefer had. to pay lower wages rather than higher wages. You'd like to pay lower prices for the things you buy rather than higher prices. Of course. That's the whole system. That's exactly the system. And you say, if you say to the, if you say to the Mexicans, you may not offer to work for lower wages then you're denying them the only weapon they have. 